If you would, stay standing for a moment. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us, this opportunity to worship you and praise you in freedom and in truth, Lord. Father God, we ask that you be with everyone that's here today. Lord, open their eyes open their ears and, and their hearts and their minds and let them be receptive to the word that you have chosen to be shared today. Father, those that are here for the first time, we thank you for being here. And, and Lord, we just ask you to just show them the love that we have and transformation for them. And, and those that are returning, I hope you feel that same love as well. Father God, we come before you today and we thank you for those that tragically lost their lives 21 years ago. And this is a day of remembrance, Father God, and, and what have we learned from that? Father, as we share these words today, just be here in your presence and fill this room with your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, watch your eyes as you take your seats. Karen's going to turn on the lights. Rebecca's going to make her way up here. Talk about some unshakable, unstoppable, amazing love. Y'all, we have two people singing up here today. We have our first Sunday of Kids Church today. This is amazing growth, and we are so, so, so excited about it. Because to be able to have that Kids Church, that kind of helps so we can all focus, all the mama and daddies can focus, and we are so excited. So excited. Also, our kids um, person, Megan, it is her birthday today, so if you see her, please wish her a happy birthday. Because I know being able to teach those kids, that is the best gift, birthday gift to her, too. So just give her a happy birthday wish. Um, if you feel compelled to give, you can give in the basket by the door online at findtransformation.com slash giving. You can text the word transformation to 830-293-4483, or you can give on our app. If you haven't yet checked into Facebook, please go ahead and pull out that phone. Uh, go to the Facebook app and make a, act like you're making a post and then scroll down and click check in. It just lets everybody know where you come to church. Uh, if you also want to add a post or comment on there to let all your friends know that have kids, we have Kids Church now, that I know that that'll draw some more in and that'll help too. We are happy to pray with you at any time. Prayer is a powerful and amazing tool that God gives us. We are happy to pray with you in person. You can text the word prayer to 830-293-4483. You can write your prayer request on the back of a transformation card right outside the door. Or you can put your prayer request in on our app. Speaking of our app, if you don't have that yet, it has some amazing things on it. So you can go to the App Store or Google Play, depending on what you have. You're searching for Church by Ministry 1. It's the purple icon with the white cross. And then once you have it downloaded, then you can search for Transformation Church Kerrville. You have access to sermons, uh, prayer requests, sign up for Bible studies, ways to contact us, and ways to give. It also puts your information for us. Sometimes we get mixed information. So... I'm going to pull out my handy dandy QR code again that I know I've mentioned before. Please scan this on your way out. If you haven't already done so, all you have to do is open your camera and hover over it for a second and it'll open a link. You can click on the link and then that way we can make sure that your information is correct so that when dad sends out emails or the church has anything important to send to you, you can get it and it, we make sure that it goes to the right email or right phone number. Dad is getting ready for, um, I've been told I'm saying it wrong. Any questions that you may have for the pastor? What's the correct title, Dad? I'm sorry. Ask the pastor. Ask the pastor, not stump the pastor. I think stump the pastor is better. But uh, send those questions in because this is his uh, last week to get ready for that because it's not next Sunday but the following Sunday. So uh, make sure to send those to Jeff at findtransformation.com or just shoot him a text if you have his number. Or write it down and hand it to me like people did that. That works too. Ah, next week, I get the pleasure of preaching again, and we are on the topic of diving in and surrendering to Christ. So I'm going to pass it back to Dad for what have we learned about 9-11. I'm going to watch that. Yeah, I was about to tell you to watch the yeah. cord. So you're going to tell me to watch the cord like I don't know it's there. But uh, there you go. What do you think about that, guys? Seven kids in kids' church today. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. We, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are growing. It's wonderful. 
God is moving in so many ways in Kerrville, Texas. You have no idea of the things that we hear and say. So we are glad you're with us today. I said it in my prayer. We love you. We hope you know that we love you. And if, if you don't know that yet, we're probably not doing something right. But we do. We absolutely love you guys. And our goal, again, is to teach you how to love others. And then to live the design that God has designed you to do. Your life. Uh, those of you watching at home, the same goes for you. We hope someday you can come and join us as well. All right. You ready to celebrate today? Yes. 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 Yes? Okay, well, we're going to celebrate today. I want you to realize that in the aftermath of 9-11, the terrorist attack on our country, country music star Alan Jackson wrote a very moving song. Many of you have probably heard it. Many of you have probably memorized that song. But well, what I'm going to ask you to do right now, I'm not going to sing it, so there's oh, some salvation on. for you already. I want you to close your eyes. And I'm just going to read the words to this song. And I want you just to think about these words as they're being read. Where were you when the world stopped turning on that September day? Were you in the yard with your wife and children or working on some stage in LA? Did you stand there in shock at the sight of the black smoke rising against the blue sky? Did you shout out in anger, in fear for your neighbor? Or did you just sit down and cry? Did you weep for the children who lost their dear loved ones? Pray for the ones who don't know. Did you rejoice for the people who walked from the rubble and sobbed for the ones left below? Did you burst out with pride for the red, white, and blue and the heroes who died just doing what they do? Did you ever look up to heaven for some kind of answer and look at yourself and what really matters? I'm just a singer of simple songs. I'm not a real political man. I watch CNN, but I'm not sure I can tell you the difference between Iraq and Iran. But I know Jesus, and I talk to God, and I remember this from when I was young. Faith, hope, and love are some good things he gave us, and the greatest is love. Where were you when the world stopped turning on that September day? teaching a class full of innocent children or driving down some cold interstate? Did you feel guilty because you're a survivor? In a crowded room, did you feel alone? Did you call up your mother and tell her you loved her? Did you dust off the Bible at home? Did you open your eyes, hope, to, hope it never happened, close your eyes and not go to sleep? Did you notice the sunset the first time in ages or speak to some stranger on the street? Did you lay down at night and think of tomorrow, go out and buy you a gun? Did you turn off that violent old movie you're watching and turn on I Love Lucy reruns? Did you go to church and hold hands with some strangers, stand in line and give your own blood? Did you just stay at home and cling tight to your family? Thank God you had somebody to love. The chorus repeats itself two more times, reminding us again of the words of Jesus and what he said, and the greatest is love. You can open your eyes. We're going to get right into the word today. Jeremiah 18, 19, and 20. Here's what it says. It says, listen to the cry of my people from a land far away. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king no longer there? Why have they aroused my anger with their images and their worthless foreign idols? The harvest is past. The summer has ended. And we are not saved. Maybe the question for America today should be this. Is the Lord no longer in the United States? Is her king no longer here? Who remembers the old song by Don McLean, American Pie? Okay, again, I'm not going to sing. But his words may be coming truer than we know. There is a line in that song that says, And the three men I admire most, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, have taken the last train for the coast, the day. The music died. 
Today marks the 21st anniversary of the tragic attack on our nation. In cities like New York and Washington, D.C., and the small community in western Pennsylvania called Shanksville, there are grim reminders of that day. Now, I personally did not lose anyone in the events that unfolded, but my world, your world, was still rocked and turned upside down. A lot happened in the years since that day when four commercial airliners suddenly became implements of destruction for those who hate our nation and its freedom and our God. I wish I could stand here today and tell you wonderful stories about how our nation was drawn back to God by the events of that day. I, I wish that it had borne only good fruit and that America had come to her senses and a national revival had taken place because of it. How great that would be, church, to be able to stand here and say that. Now, don't get me wrong. There was some good fruit that came out of this tragedy. Many got saved that day. Many got saved at all the funerals and all the gaps of people being brought out of the rubble. People were accepting Christ. Many got saved all over the world because of the shock of 9-11. No other time in our history other than Pearl Harbor had American been attacked by a foreign enemy. More money was donated by private means than any other time before in the history of the world. People lined up around blocks all over the world to donate blood. Politicians stopped their squabbling and came together in defense of our nation. Other nations joined in our grief. I don't mean to downplay the good, I really don't, that came from this. But I have to be fully transparent this morning in saying that America has missed almost completely what God would have done for our nation had we continued in the spirit we had from the time shortly after this tragedy. I believe God wanted that to serve as a wake-up call. We know he turns evil to good. We know that. He wanted to make it a wake-up call for our country so that we, because we had moved so far from him. How far out of his protective hands we had chosen to go. He's wanting America to stop quoting 2 Chronicles 7.14 and live it. And for a time, we did just that. For a time, Congress worked enthusiastically as one. For a time, people gave unselfishly. People started back to church and they started praying again. Kids were allowed to pray in school and no one questioned it. For a time, America was a nice place to live again. For a time. But that's the problem. Time. Time makes us forget what has happened. And time brings us back to the same stupid place we were before this tragedy. Spanish-American philosopher George Santayana in his book, The Light of Reason, said, Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Over the course of the past 21 years, we have not only slid back to where we were before September 11th, 2001, but I think we have fallen even further. In the months and years that have followed, one man who brought a suit to remove under God from the Pledge of Allegiance later filed another lawsuit to stop Congress from opening their sessions in prayer. And he's also said that he will challenge in God we trust on our money. At a time when we need the Lord more than ever, a conservative Episcopal priest was defrocked and removed from the church for saying that he believed their denomination had become too liberal and was no longer following the Bible. 
A Navy chaplain was told he could no longer offer prayer in Jesus' name because it might offend someone. A woman was made to take down her flag at work, her American flag at work, because it offended someone from another nation. A few years after 9-11, the Catholic Church was rocked with the pre-sex scandal. People in trusted positions, people we have looked up to, have failed in alarming ways. Martha Stewart, Enron, Worldcom, our economy is still crashing down around us. Interest rates are rising, and inflation is out of control. All of this still within the 21-year shadow of what happened on September 11th, 2001. All of Congress both Republicans and Democrats, are back to doing business as usual. Illegally manufactured drugs are being brought into our country at record pace. Our borders are in crisis. Stories of rioting and looting by groups like BLM and Antifa are still happening. Czars were being created outside of the confines of, normal of the normal process. Sorry. And many with past that indicate they hate our nation are now being put into power. Christian symbols being covered or removed at public universities so when invited guests speak, they might not be offended. We've had floods and fires and disaster after disaster. Katrina, Harvey, just to name a few. Wildfires have been raging, destroying thousands of acres, destroying hundreds of homes, taking the lives of both firemen and civilians alike. So I ask a rhetorical question to you today. How did this generation get as dumb as a box of rocks? Simple answer. They didn't learn from our mistakes. So to quote George Santiana again, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. The Apostle Paul taught that the Old Testament was an example to us that we should learn from their failures, their turning away from God, but as a nation, we haven't. Scripture also says that a dog returns to its vomit. So have we as a people. Hear me, church. We have headed back down the same path to perdition that we were on before September 11, 2001. Any ground that we had gained has been swallowed up like a Florida sinkhole. I can hear the words of Jesus today as he spoke in Matthew 23, 37. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stone those who are sent to her? How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under the wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, desolate. What does the word of God tell us? What does the word of God show us, church? What does scripture show us about all of these events that are still happening? You'll turn to Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're going to go through that today. We're going to step by step through each of the verses. First is going to be Deuter Deuteronomy 31 and 3. It says, when all these things happen to you, the blessings and curses I have set before you, and you come to your senses while you are in all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you. And you and your children return to the Lord your God and obey him with all your heart and all your soul by doing everything I am commanding you today. Then he will restore your fortunes, have compassion on you, and gather again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. See, God is trying to speak to us through this verse. 21 years ago, he tried to speak to us through this verse. And he's still doing it today, church. Verses 4 and 5 says, Even if your exiles are at the farthest horizon, he will gather you and bring you back from there. The Lord your God will bring you into the land your ancestors possessed, and you will take possession of it. He will cause you to prosper and multiply. 
He will multiply you more than he did your ancestors. And that again, that's no matter how far we have fallen, God will restore us if we go back to God. Verses 6 through 9. The Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the hearts of your descendants. And you will love him with all your heart and with all your soul so that you will live. The Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies who hate you and persecute you. Then you will again obey him and follow all his commands. I am commanding you today. The Lord your God will make you prosper abundantly in all the work of your hands, your offspring, the offspring of your livestock, and the produce of your land. Church, because we failed to obey, our lands have been burning with plagues like swine flu, COVID-19, and now monkeypox. All of those, we're told, threaten our lives. Our economy is unstable. Corporate leadership is faltered. And our elected officials on both sides have put themselves over us. But please hear what the, what the scripture says. What is our hope if we return to God? Continuing on with the second part of verse 9 and 10, it says, Indeed, the Lord will again delight in your prosperity as he delighted in that of your ancestors. When you obey the Lord your God by keeping his commands and statutes that are written in this book of the law and return to him with all your heart and all your soul. Friends, the Lord is still saying that. But for how much longer? I don't know. He gave them and is giving us an offer of life and death. Verses 11 and 16 says, This command that I give you today is certainly not too difficult or beyond your reach. I'm going to stop there for a second. How many times have you heard people say, being a Christian is hard? I'm tired of it. It's not. God has made this within our reach. Scripture says so. Continuing on. It is not in heaven so that you have to ask, who will go up to heaven and get it for us and proclaim it to us that we may follow it? And it is not across the sea so that you have to ask, who will cross the sea, get it for us and proclaim it to us so that we may follow it? But the message is very near to you in your mouth in your heart so that you may follow it. Hear me this morning, church. It's still a good offer from God. Verse 15 says, See today I have set before you life and prosperity, death and adversity, for I am commanding you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commands, statutes, and ordinances so that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God may bless you in the land you are entering to possess. Love God. Walk in His ways. Keep His decrees. Bask in His blessings. What is so hard about that? As every good thing that comes from God, he also warns us what happens when we don't. Verses 17 and 20. Listen to what he says about disobedience. But if your heart turns away and you do not listen and you are led astray to bow in worship to other gods and serve them, I tell you today that you will certainly perish. And will not prolong your days in the land you are entering to, to possess across the Jordan. Hear me, church. Listen to God's word to his people. He says, continuing on, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Choose 
life so that you and your descendants may live. Love the Lord your God, obey him, and remain faithful to him, for he is your life, and he will prolong your days as you live in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Choose life. I've said this before. When God tells you that he sets before you blessings and curses, life and death, and he says, choose life, Church, take his advice. Choose life. Why would you want any other? Who here has ever had a hard time learning something? Be honest. We all have. Someone teaches you, when, when someone's teaching you something, they may show you a little trick that gives you a little help to learn and that's by putting what you're trying to learn or trying to memorize into song. Has anyone ever done that? No? Some yes, some no, raise your hands, I love it. When our oldest was growing up, Caitlin, um, we took this advice and we gave her a way to remember her address. Now it's been over 25 years since we've lived there. So this is a quarter of a century ago. But today I will tell you that it was, my name is Caitlin Tellerico, and this is where I live. 2278 Cypress Point, Flagstaff, Arizona. I had to sing that one because I can't do it any other way. So we, we taught her how to memorize her address when she was, what, Karen? Three, four? By song. Now, I would think that whoever taught me that was a genius, and I wouldn't be wrong because it wasn't some children's guru that did it. No. It was God and his creativity. He taught the Israelites how to remember things through song. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 31. You'll see that God is saying something if you can't remember something. He says, make it into a song. It's that important. This is why I want you to remember it. Starting, in chapter, in, uh, starting with verse 19 through 22, he said, Therefore, write down this song for yourselves. And teach it to the Israelites. Have them sing it. So that this song may be a witness for me against the Israelites. When I bring them into the land, I swore to give their ancestors a land flowing with milk and honey. They will eat their fill and prosper. They will turn to other gods and worship them, despising me and breaking my covenant. And when many troubles and afflictions come to them, this song will testify against them because their descendants will not have forgotten it even after a quarter century. For I know what they are prone to do even before I bring them into the land I swore to give them. So Moses wrote down this song on that day and taught it to the Israelites. Now a lot of our patriotic songs in America have meaning. They were written as if to tell a story of things for us to remember, like God is showing Moses here in scriptures. So if America the Beautiful had a verse added to it for today's day and times, it may go something like this. And again, I'm not singing. A wasted and forsaken land, how have we grown so lame? From God's rich hand, to man's own plan, we labor now in vain. America, America, when will you heed my call and turn from sin? Invite me in, lest pride precede your fall. We are a nation of isolation. We beg forgiveness from nations that hate us. From nations that over the years we have saved from ruin. Nations that are indebted to us. We're personally as a nation in debt to nations like China and Saudi Arabia. Some are still afraid to fly. And those of us that do are inconvenienced every time we do it. Some are afraid to go check the mail in their mailbox or open a package from someone that they don't know. 
We're afraid of what might happen next. One event, September 11, 21 years ago, has literally put thousands to flight. At first, the enemy that we had was foreign invaders, and they hated our country. But today, in many cases, it's the very people that we have elected to government who are dismantling all that God has given us and done for us. Schools have given in to Islam. You can't say Jesus, but they force students to read books on the Quran in our nation's public universities and in some of our public schools. The Apostle Paul said, if anyone comes with any other gospel, let them be cursed. But we're afraid to say that today because it's politically incorrect. In the words of the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 8, 20, I repeat, the harvest is past, the summer has ended, and we are not saved. We are a lost nation, as lost as we were prior to September 11. But God is still crying out to us today. To his people, he calls by name. Friends, we have to quit playing church. We have to quit going through the motions. <clears throat> We've got to quit waiting for someone else to do something about it. We've got to quit saying, we're small. They have more people than us. We've got to quit letting sin reign in our mortal bodies. We have got to stand up for Jesus. Jesus said, you are either with me or you are against me. Even if America repents, we are accountable to God for what we have done. One last time, the words of George Santayana. Those who could not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. You can choose to stick your head in the sand, but judgment is coming. Now is the time to examine your own relationships with the Lord and make right anything that has to be righted. Isaiah 6, 5 and 9 says, Woe to me! I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. He said, Go and tell this people. Church, God is calling each and every one of us today. He is calling you. Are you willing to say, here I am? Today, we will never forget. Humans are naturally a forgetful people, and we often need help remembering. That's why we have tools like anniversaries and altars and ceremonies. They help us to remember. And when we pause our busy lives to remember the past, there are a few specific things that we do. We need to look back with honor. We need to stand firm in the present. And we have to have hope for the future. Well, many of us work hard to remember things that matter to us, like birthdays, anniversaries. Guys, any, any guys in here have problems with that? Not really? I'm the only one? Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for your honesty. Um, any other moments in time? People, we try to remember people, our friends, our relatives that have gone before us. Pets. I can remember my first pet, and that was 57 years ago. I didn't have it until I was one, so I'm 58, just so you know. The list could go on and on for each and every one of us. Things that we try to remember. We do this because we know how fickle our memories can be. We often forget the things that matter to us, not because we want to, not because we're heartless, 
is simply because we're human. We need help remembering. And it's been that way for a long, long, long time. We just read a few minutes ago about God telling us to put something to song to help us remember. God knew that his people needed this as well as other tools that he provided to commemorate moments in their collective history so that they could look back in honor and stand firm in the present and have hope for the future. We do the same thing today. We commemorate dates throughout the year to remember the past, to make sure we never forget, among other things, the courage, the sacrifice, and price that others have paid on our behalf. Today is one of those days that we pause our busy lives to remember. One of the most important things that we do when we remember is honor the past. The word honor simply means to give great respect, to hold in high esteem. And when we look to the past, we can see that there are countless individuals that have gone before us, many of whom have sacrificed unimaginable things, including their very lives so that we can enjoy and celebrate the freedoms that we have. But today, today we honor the memory of those that had no choice. The ones in the tower and the Pentagon. Those on the plane that crashed in Pennsylvania, they were heroes stopping more mass destruction and bringing down the plane in a Pennsylvania field with the final words, let's roll. This is just one of the countless stories that we could tell from that day. Our history, though, is full of amazing people and families who gave everything. They did it for many varied reasons and purposes, but all the same, today we remember. But God... He wants us to remember something else, too. He wants us to remember to forgive our enemies and pray for those who have persecuted us in the past. Forgiveness is one of the most powerful forces on earth, and we must learn to forgive others just as we have been forgiven ourselves. For those of you taking freedom class, you understand or you will understand the power of forgiveness very soon. If we don't forgive, the bitterness and the anger of the past events in our lives will rob us of our present peace. And so just as much as we remember to honor the past, we also must remember to offer forgiveness. This frees us to be faithful in the present. As I think today about the remaining, about remaining faithful in the present, I'm reminded of a verse in Ephesians 5. 15, 16 says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. History teaches us that no one really knew what was going to happen on September 11, 2001. 21 years ago today, at 8.46 a.m., the first plane crashed into the floors 93 through 99 of the North Tower. The 9.03 a.m., floors 75 and 85 of the South Tower were hit by another jet airplane. At 9.37, the western facade of the Pentagon was penetrated by yet another plane. 30 minutes later at 10.07 a.m., Flight 93 crashed into a field, killing all on board 
but saving the lives of hundreds. That evening at 8.03 p.m., President Bush addressed the nation, calling the attacks evil, despicable acts of terror, and then said that America, its friends and its allies, would stand together while declaring war on terrorism. Think about how quickly things can change in our lives and in our world. So where is our hope today? As we look to honor the past and those deserving of respect and esteem, as we look at our present circumstances and our situation, are we encouraged? Are we hopeful? Are we assured? Are we making the most of the opportunities that God has given to us? In light of this teaching today, as we share communion together in just a few minutes, I ask that you take some time praying over a few specific areas. Let's start with gratitude for all that God has done for us. Let's remember to thank God for the individuals who were tragically killed and for the families that were affected. Let's pray that God would provide comfort for anyone today who needs comfort. Let's pray that God would help us to forgive our enemies and to make things right with those that we can. And finally, let's pray for the future of our country, for our government, and for all that are involved. You know, I titled this message, What Have We Learned? I've shown you based on our past and present, not much. But today that changes. Today is a day of learning what God said about our past. Today is a day of learning about what God says about our future. All because today, today is a day to remember. Amen. So join me in prayer, please. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your word that is still true today as it was when it was written. That you provide us a lesson. History. Things that we should and shouldn't do. Lord, I pray for our country today. I pray for those who have evil in their hearts. That you replace it with your Holy Spirit. That you remove and pluck those from office that do nothing but go against your standards. Not so much our country alone, but you and the principles that you have given us to live by. That's what they hate. They hate the fact that you are love. They hate the fact that you care about those that care about you as well as those that don't. They don't understand it, Lord. Lord, I value every human being on this planet because you value them first. Lord, be with us today. If anyone in this room was affected personally by 9-11, Lord, calm their hearts. If anyone watching online was affected, calm them as well. Lord, I speak to you today, and I thank you for your mercies. I thank you for your willingness to forgive us of our sins, our transgressions, our past, our mistakes, our stupidity. And I thank you for healing us. I thank you for allowing us to live out 2 Chronicles. Lord, you are merciful. You are wise. 
I just thank you. With all eyes closed and heads bowed, if there's anyone in this room today that doesn't have that personal relationship with Jesus right where you are, just raise your hand. No one's looking. I'm not going to call you down front. Just raise your hand. Experience the freedom that he wants to give you. For the rest of us, as we prepare for communion today, let's cleanse our hearts and our minds to be better vessels for him. So if you would, just repeat these words after me. Father God, I come to you today and I repent of anything I've done this week that was offensive to you or to others. Cleanse my heart, Lord. Continue my relationship with you so that as we share communion, I have a clean heart and a clean mind and I am ready and willing to answer I am here. Lord, thank you for Jesus and his dying on the cross to forgive me of my sins. And more importantly, of this destination that we will live with you forever. In your name I pray. Amen. If you would, take out your communion and as you get ready to share, as I do every week, I'm just going to remind you a little bit about what this is. As you take the wafer, remember that this wafer represents, they, they need something. Um, the wafer represents the bread that Jesus broke with the disciples the day in the upper room. The last Passover meal, the things that he said to them and shared with them, they had no understanding. They did not realize what he was trying to say. But as he broke the bread, he said, this is my body, which will be given up for you. He became the sacrificial lamb. There is no need for animal sacrifice anymore. It was his body that was given up for that. And he said to them, every time you eat of this, remember me. Then Jesus took the cup of wine and after giving thanks, he told them, this is the blood of the new covenant. That means the old was gone. This covered their sins. The blood of the lamb protected them from one Passover to another. This blood protects all forever. And he told them that every time they drink of this cup to remember him. bow your heads one more time with me. Father God, thank you for sharing of yourself with us. For explaining to us that communion with you and the saints that have gone before is an awesome and mighty thing to do. And you just, your willingness to bring us to that room that night, each and every week. Lord, again, today is a, it's a day of remembrance, a day that Many of us will never forget. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else, though, Lord, than right here, right now, in this present moment. Lord, those that are here, let them walk away today renewed with a fresh understanding of your word with forgiveness in their hearts and in their minds and on their lips. Lord, bring us back safely again next week so that we can hear more about you because it is all about you. Lord, we praise your name and we give you all the glory. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen and amen. I won't be here next week, but you get Rebecca, so y'all go forth into the world loving God, loving people, and living your design.